guys, Bob and Marcel here from Sherpa New England. Today we're going to be going over the inside working of the Sherpa. We've removed most of the panels and padding so you can see inside and get up close and personal. If you guys have any additional questions, always feel free to call us and ask and we can go over something more specific if we don't touch on it. You ready, Marcel? I'm ready. So under the passenger seat is the fuse panel. Uh, this vehicle is mostly mechanical. It has no ECMs, ECUs. Um, it's a real basic system, so when you're out in the woods, you, you aren't breaking down. Um, they try to keep it as simple as possible. Um, over here is the tire inflation valve. Um, it's all wrapped in heat sleeve so that um, nothing melts underneath here because um, it blows up the tires with the exhaust from the engine. Here's the heater. Um, comes out right here. There's a little flap when the when the inside is all together, you pull the flap up for the heat to come out. It has a heater valve down here, so during the summer, um, you can shut that off so you aren't baking inside here. Um, over here is the chain. There's an adjuster to uh, take the slack out if you need to. Uh, it comes with a tool kit, and all the tools to make all these adjustments are in that kit. Um, got your levers for your to steer here left or right um, you pull them both back it puts it in neutral and that is your brake as well recommended tire pressure settings for or whatever you're using it for um, that way you can adjust your pressures your tire pressure gauge is actually down here um, so you can tell what your pressure is at um, then you get your buttons up here this turns on the lights in the front part there's another switch in the rear for the rear lights um, you get your coolant Temperature sensor, <laughs> fuel gauge, um, voltage gauge, and your hour so you can keep track of your maintenance. Up here they give you um, places to charge your cell phones or whatever else you might have that plugs into a uh, 12 volt receptacle. Get all your gauges here. Um, this blows up your tires. You push the button and that switches the valve so that you can inflate your tires. You got your wiper switch. Um, this is to lube your chains. Uh, it uh, automatically tells you when a beeper starts going off. Both of these buttons are for that. Um, you push it and when it stops beeping, uh, the chains are all lubed. This is for your heater. Um, this here is the horn. Um, these are your four-way flashers. Um, and then you got your, your parking lights. That's for your market lights. These are for your headlights. Uh, high low beam. And then you got a left, a right turn and a left turn. And then over here, this is a function that we've put in. Um, we have strobe lights on this so it can be an emergency vehicle. Um, so you just push that and we have eight different strobe lights around the vehicle that come on. You got your clutch pedal and your th your throttle pedal here and I think that pretty well covers everything up in this area it's got a five speed uh, transmission um, which is pretty pretty simple setup um, here's your ignition your battery disconnect and your emergency stop button here in case you needed to uh, shut it down and it, it wouldn't shut down off the key switch up here you got a backup camera the buttons over here next to the interior light switch um, you push that and you can see behind you which works out really well because visibility in the rear um, is not that good because the vehicle sets up so high here we are in the engine compartment. Uh, this unit is powered by a Kubota uh, V1505 turbo diesel engine. Puts out about 44, 45 horsepower. Um, again, it's all mechanical, which is nice about this unit. Um, right down to even the fan system is a belt-driven cooling fan on the side. It's not electronic uh, on these. Down below, we also can see the uh, braking system, the rotors there. Those are what 
turn you and stop you from left to right. Um, they run independently but pulled together, put you in neutral and set your brake as Marcel previously told you about. Uh, everything's remote, the remote oil filters. You also have your horns, your brake reservoirs for your master cylinders, and your air filter which has a snorkel system on it as well um, to make sure you can stay out of the water. The inside of the body is made of uh, aircraft aluminum and as we told you before in a previous video the belly pan is made out of Swedish steel um, which is very durable and does not bend like American steel. Very good system. Transmission there, that's your 5-speed manual transmission. Everything's very accessible once you get the panels out. Um, we also have the batteries down below the driver's seat which are the factory batteries. Those uh, are 12 volt batteries. They are smaller but the unit itself does not draw or have much power uh, to be used. Over underneath the passenger side um, padding uh, is your coolant overflow reservoir. Um, this is where you add your coolant and um, check your coolant level. Here we are in the back of the Sherpa. I'm going to start here with the interior lights. There's a switch on the inside which runs the interior lighting uh, up above that runs throughout the whole Sherp. Really lights it up, makes it so you can see what you're doing. As you can see, the whole Sherp, once the interior is lined, uh, has this durable camouflage material with all these safety loops, which you can hook things on with carabiners. Uh, on the back side of the padding, as you can see, is a heat reflective material. This goes over all of the padding, which helps keep uh, heat in or, um, or out. The material is very thick and durable. All the interior walls are like a gray vinyl. Behind this gray vinyl, everything is spray foam insulated on all the sides and the rear. This unit's completely sealed and insulated, which is very good, especially if you're going to be camping out or doing expeditions, or if it's on a rescue mission in cold weather, it will stay warm inside. In the rear here is a spare Wabasto heater, which is completely separate from the front heater which was under the driver's seat that Marcel was talking about earlier. Here's also a little bit of a better view of the rear calipers, uh, one for the left and one for the right. We also have some storage compartments up above which also transfer into the front as well. In the back we also have some 12 volt outlets and USB ports as well here for cell phone charging or extra items that you may uh, want to have plugged in, as you can see right here. Now we're in the right rear of the vehicle under the panels. Um, you got your fuel pump here, um, your fuel filter, as you can see. Um, here's your chain um, for the right rear axle, your adjusters down here, and here's the um, hose that runs to the tires to blow up the uh, tires using the exhaust. It's plumbed throughout the whole vehicle. Um, in here we have, uh, this is actually an add-on from us. We installed a deep cycle battery as we're putting a uh, aftermarket winch on the front. So we put a battery circuit breaker in there to supply the demand of that winch. Here's the chain oil tank. Um, this has a self lubricating chain on it as we spoke about earlier. Um, when you push the button, it opens up these solenoids. Um, they pump oil out of this tank onto the chain. Um, this is the left rear chain. Here's the adjuster like on the other side. I'm trying to find the damn chain. As you can see up here, this is where the oil comes out. And you can see that brush. The oil goes on the chain and then the brush keeps it from going everywhere it gets it on the chain to make sure the chains lubed up well so you're not wearing out the chain prematurely back here there's a big cubby to store whatever you may need to store uh, depending on what you're using the vehicle for and then there's another cubby here to store more stuff and that cubby actually comes out and there's a fuel tank underneath there.
fuel tank, you've got your sending unit over here, and then you've got your filler neck here and your vent. Um, all plastic tank, so you don't have no worries as far as corrosion. Um, and here's the inside view. We got metal rails running down through, and then the rest is basically aluminum. Down in here is the exhaust air diverter valve uh, for blowing up the tires when you hit the switch in the front as we showed you in the previous video. Um, it flicks this over and lets exhaust go into the tires to blow them up. This is your air filter um, and the snorkel that we spoke of earlier uh, to keep uh, the engine supplied with dry air. And this is all accessible through this side panel right from the outside of the shirt itself. That easily pops out. We'll go to the other side and show you that. And this is the access panel on the right side of the Sherp. They've got your radiator. Uh, there's the bottom of the overflow tank as we showed you in the earlier video. Your hoses uh, that run down through and this is all accessed from this panel that just pops right out really easy.